Hey guys, it's Kaylee. Welcome back to my channel. As most of you know, I am a clothing reseller. I sell men's and women's clothing on both eBay and Poshmark and a couple other platforms, but right now my focus is mainly on eBay and Poshmark. That is where I make the bulk of my money. So my business has really grown since I started reselling part-time, and I really think a lot of that has to do with my knowledge of certain items and really coming to an understanding of different bread and butter items that I could pick up to keep consistent income going. So one of those items that are bread and butter for me are men's jeans, and I didn't start selling men's clothing at all until way later into uh, my reselling journey and I think that's because I was just a little bit intimidated. I didn't know much about men's clothing. I just felt more comfortable in the women's section. But as I started learning more and more about men's clothing and doing more research into different brands and different items, I learned that men's is a really great category to sell in. In particular, I really love selling men's jeans and if you aren't currently selling in the men's department, this would be a great one, a great category for you to start learning and basically dipping your toes into the men's section of the thrift store. So today is going to be all about men's jeans and basically trying to convince you why you should sell them. A lot of resellers that are really successful don't like to share their secrets and I don't really see a point in holding back information. Um, main purpose of my channel is to educate resellers who are new to reselling, thinking about reselling, or want to grow in their reselling business. And there is enough out there, enough items, enough sourcing opportunities that I think we can all be successful. I became successful in my reselling business by watching other resellers that were willing to share the information and then also some lessons I had learned that nobody else was sharing and it took me a really, really long time to learn those categories or those brands because nobody was talking about them. So I'm here today to share a little bit of information with you about men's jeans so that you can add this category to your reselling business and hopefully make a lot more income. So one of the things I love about selling men's jeans is that when you go into a thrift store, first of all, the men's section is a lot smaller than the women's section, even most of the time the home goods section of the thrift store. So it makes it really easy to go through all the racks and in particular if you're just looking for jeans you can get through that thing in like five minutes and that five minutes could yield you significant profit if you decide to sell in that category so i love sourcing men's jeans for that reason because it's so easy to get in and out of that section and move on to the other categories that i am more comfortable with I also love selling men's jeans because listing them and doing comps on them are really, really simple. Most of men's jeans, I won't say all because definitely not all, but I would say 90% of men's jeans have all the information you need to figure out the size, the style name, the cut, the fabric information, all of that is inside of the men's jeans. And style names and cuts are really important to put in your title. That way the buyers can find what they're looking for more easily and hopefully buy from you. And this is different than selling women's jeans because while some women's jeans do have the style name or the cut, a lot of times you have to guess and you have to do a lot more research into a woman's item versus men's jeans. So even if you aren't familiar with different things on men's jeans, different cuts. If you if you aren't educated in that area, it's okay because all that information is on the tag and usually inside of the waistband. So that is basically the main reason I love selling men's jeans is because it's so easy to look up comps and to put that information in your listing. It's a no brainer. Speaking of doing comps, another reason I love selling men's jeans is because they have a significantly higher sell-through rate than women's jeans. Now, I don't know how you guys do your comps, but when I'm doing comps for any platform, even if I want to sell the item on Poshmark, if I were only on Poshmark, I would still do my comps on eBay. And the reason is eBay shares a lot of their uh, numbers as far as available listings go and how many are sold. 
and Poshmark does show you that information, but they don't give you the number, which makes it a lot harder. I mean, you're not going to scroll through 200 uh, sold listings on Poshmark and count how many there are. But on eBay, it's really easy to find the sell-through rate of an item to determine whether you want to pick it up or not. I do think sell-through rates are extremely important in any item that you're comping. And if you're interested, I do have a video that I made pretty recently about how to check sell-through rate and basically what a sell-through rate is and what it all means. And I will put that somewhere here on the screen. But basically what a sell-through rate is, it is how fast an item is going to sell. So if there are 100 men's jeans listed and 25 of them sell, that would be a 25% sell-through rate, which means the likelihood of that particular pair of jeans selling is not very likely. A 25% is not very likely. But if I were to tell you that this particular pair of jeans uh, has 100 available, for sale and then 300 sold, that would be a good indicator that it is worth picking up because it's going to sell quickly because more are selling than what are listed. So if you just do a quick search on eBay sold comps and you just type in men's jeans and you go to the pre-owned jeans and then you hit sold, you'll quickly see that men's jeans have an outstanding sell through rate on eBay and the same is true for Poshmark. So another reason I love picking up men's jeans is because they sell quickly and there are always eyes on your product. And the last reason I really love selling men's jeans are because they are relatively simple to ship. They all ship about the same way. They all fit in a padded flat rate envelope unless they are a really large size or a really thick material. But I'd say 98% of the time I shove those in a padded flat rate envelope. I don't really have to do any guessing as far as weight goes because it is a flat rate envelope. So this is the padded flat rate envelope. And when I'm doing my listing, I don't have to do guesswork of um, guessing the dimensions of a package. I don't have to weigh the item because this is up to like, I don't know, a lot, like 70 pounds or something. So I always know if it can fit in here, it's just so easy to list that. And then when it does come time to ship the item, I just slide it into one of these. These are free on USPS and I don't know, it's just so like a no brainer. I don't have to think about it. I can get them listed and I can get them shipped really quickly. So I have a pair of jeans here that I pulled out of my inventory that I wanted to educate you on a couple things about men's jeans. And then here at the end, I will share with you five of my favorite brands of jeans to sell in the men's department. And I chose those five. There's a bunch more that I like to sell. Um, but I chose those five because I feel like they're relatively easy to come across at the thrift store. They're a lot more common. So for those reasons, I chose those five and that will be at the end of the video. Okay, so bonus brand because I didn't include this on my uh, five of my favorites list. These are called TK Axel, which is a relatively new brand to me. They're not new, but they're new to me. I learned about them in the past year. And since then I've been picking them up and they've been selling really well. Now jeans are what I consider a quick flip, meaning that I'm okay with paying a little up for something to sell it at a low price because I know that I'm gonna get my money back plus a little profit pretty quickly. So usually when I'm picking up jeans, I'm okay with buying them for let's say max $5 and then flipping them for 25. Most of the time I am getting more than 25, but I would say that that's where I'm comfortable selling men's jeans at max buy for $5 minimum sell for 25. So here are a pair of men's jeans and I just want to show you how easy it is to find these style names. So when I said that it's super easy, this is what I'm talking about. So got the brand name here. You've got your waist size and then your inseam, which sometimes they put um, length, but it's inseam. And then here is the style name, the Relax Straight. So most of the time, you don't have to do anything else but look inside of the waistband. Now, um, I pulled these jeans because, like, I wanted to show you a pair of... Uh, a different brand of jeans but I am all sold out of those like as soon as I list them they sell um, but like 
We'll talk about a brand called BKE here in a little bit, but BKE is a really great brand and theirs are almost always style name right there or right along the side here. American Eagle jeans, sometimes they are more towards the inner waistband, but basically if you just look throughout the waistband, no matter where they're at, sometimes on the pockets it'll give more information, but in general you're going to see all of that information um, and then sometimes also they are in the inside of the fly area here. But if you just look on the inside of the men's jeans, most of the time you can find all the information you need right there. So getting this information is important for when you decide whether you're going to buy it in the first place to resell. I would recommend that you don't just look up, let's say you come across a pair of men's TK axle jeans. Don't just search men's TK axle jeans and then determine whether you want to buy them based on sold and sold right then. You would look up men's TK axle jeans and then pop in before you hit search. Uh, relax straight because some styles sell better than others and you definitely want to pick up certain styles that you know are going to flip. But that's the beauty of selling men's jeans is you've got all the information right there that you don't have to do any guesswork. You can figure out from data whether that style sells or not. And then additionally, you would want to put that into your title in your listing. So I only do a couple measurements in my listing and it's up to you whether you want to do measurements in your listing or not. As I said, like all the information's right here. So you've got your waist and your inseam, but I have noticed that sometimes I do get customers um, that will message me and ask for a specific measurement because they know that a tag says one thing, but based on different brands, cuts and everything, they might fit a little differently. So when I list jeans, I do two measurements. And again, I do realize it is on the tag. But just like women's jeans, it might say uh, a waist 30 and then it doesn't measure that. So I always include measurements. So I do the waist and the inseam and that's all I do. That's all I put in my listing. So to check the waist, I just pull the waistband. Um, I don't stretch it, but I pull it kind of taut to where um, if it's laying on a table, I would do this. And then I measure side to side and then I double that measurement for circumference because that measurement's going all the way around the jean and that would be your waist measurement. So if I put a measuring tape here and it measured 15 inches across, that would be a 30 inch waist and I just put that in my description. I also do inseam. So you would want to look for the crotch seam which is right here and you'll just measure along the leg seam here all the way down to the cuff. And that would be your inseam measurement. You don't need a double or anything. So I put two measurements, waist and inseam, and then also include in my listing the um, size that the tag says, and that's what I put in my item specifics, and I call it a day. And with that, I hardly get any questions. Sometimes I will pick up men's jeans based on compensating factors, styles, cuts that I know are really in. And here's a couple things that I look for. That way I don't have to go through every single pair of men's jeans and researching every one. So I've noticed a lot of the popular jean brands that people like to pick up have a contrast stitching. And I wish I had another pair of jeans because it would be more pronounced, but this is what I look for. So as these are all hung up on a rack, I don't need to go and pull through every single jean. Sometimes I'll just go through and look at the side and see if I see a contrast stitching. So that would be what you're looking for, a thick contrast stitching. And this tends to be a good indicator that this is a more modern um, style and a desirable brand. And then from there I would do comps. So contrast stitching is good. Something else I look for and these ones do not have it, so I'll have to insert a picture here, but I look for flat pockets. So on the back of the jeans, these are just regular back pockets, but the flat pockets come and basically fold over a regular pocket and usually have a button to fasten them in place. And I find that flat pockets have good resale value. That is something that people are searching for. 
So if you do have one with flat pockets, make sure you put flat pockets in the title. Another thing that sometimes adds value or is more desirable on men's jeans, and I think women's jeans too, but all jeans, <laughs> um, are distressing. So these jeans definitely have some distressing and sometimes I think the more distressed it is, the better. Um, but if jeans do have distressing, even if it's just a little bit, make sure to put the word distressed in your title because that is a term that buyers are searching for. And then lastly, another uh, key factor I wanted to mention was a button fly. So these ones are a zip fly, which is the one um, probably what you're most used to seeing. But if you've ever come across jeans that don't have a zip and they button across the fly here, that's called button fly. And I'm finding that that is a lot of brands don't make button fly anymore. And for that reason, I think they're more desirable because they're more rare. So in some brands, having a button fly makes them worth more. And so if you do come across them and you're doing comps, make sure to comp with button fly because you might get different results uh, that vary on price. Um, and then I would also suggest including a button fly in your title if you do indeed have a button fly. Okay, coming into a close. So I did want to share before I left you today a few, actually five, of uh, some of my favorite brands that I consider bread and butter that I pick up on a regular basis. Of course, like I said, I always do comps for the particular style that's inside the waistband or on the tag. Um, so not everything in these brands does have a high sell through rate or will sell for a lot. But in general, I think that these brands are really good men's uh, jean brands to pick up. So I'd say my overall favorite to find is BKE. BKE is sold at Buckle, and if you've ever been at a Buckle, they're usually in a mall. I don't think I've ever seen a standalone Buckle. They're usually in a mall, but if you've ever been in there, um, they have really, like, distressed, uh, military, like, sometimes grungy styles. I think Affliction is sold there sometimes, so that gives you kind of uh, an idea of the style. And I'll put a couple pictures up here of examples in the tag of BKE men's jeans. But I really love picking those up. If you ever go inside the store, their jeans retail for a lot. Um, a lot. It's more than I'm willing to pay for jeans. So when I come across them, they have really good resale value. And that's not something you can say about every higher priced retail jean. Sometimes things retail for $200, but you can only resell them for 10. BKE men's jeans have a really good resale value. Depending on the style, I can usually get between 35 and 45 for BKE men's jeans. And I'm also starting to notice that on Poshmark, buyers are willing to pay a little bit more for that brand of jeans versus on eBay. This brand is really well known for that contrast stitching that I talked about. So maybe when you first start and you're going through the men's jeans rack, I would suggest going, pulling through every single one and then researching anything you're not familiar with. Um, but after you get some experience with that and you know you can start to pass on some things and spend less time going through it, you can do what I do, which is walking through and just looking at the sides of the jeans. You don't even have to touch them. Just walk through and look at the sides. Most places have them hung up that way. And then just look for that contrast stitching and then see if it's BKE. My second favorite brand to sell is American Eagle. I love selling men's American Eagle jeans. If you do a quick search on eBay for solds, you'll see that they sell really, really quickly. And while there is a lot listed, they're moving constantly, which means eyes are always going to be on your item. So as long as you price the item right, it's going to flip quickly. American Eagle is really well known for their denim in both men's and women's. Um, but in particular, the men's I find sell really well, and I can usually sell those between 25 and 30. This is definitely a brand I think that uh, you really, really need to be careful to search the style name inside the waistband because there are some that sell for $10 or $15. Um, and then there is a lot of them that sell, like I said, between that $25 and $30 range. So just make sure that you're always checking the style name when you do your comps.
So the next one's kind of a tricky one because when I search this brand on eBay, comps are all over the place. Um, and for some reason, when I started picking them up, um, I found that they, I was pricing them for what the sold comps were saying. And then they were selling like overnight, which is a good indicator to me that I had them priced a little too low. So then I started raising the price and I kind of found, um, the price that works for me as far as selling this brand of men's jeans. So the brand is Polo Ralph Lauren. If you come across Polo Ralph Lauren jeans, I can usually get 30 to $35 for them. And I kind of just basically ignore comps now um, because every time I'm selling them, they're selling between 30 and $35. And if I price them in that range, they sell very, very quickly. Um, so I would recommend picking up. I've not had a problem with any of the styles. Polo Ralph Lauren men's jeans. Bolo. Polo Bolo. That was lame. Okay, next brand is Tommy Bahama. Um, I just recently started finding and picking up this brand of men's denim. Um, again, with Polo Ralph Lauren, comps are all over the place. I wouldn't say that every style in that brand is worth picking up, but the ones that I'm finding that flip really quickly and for good money, usually between $25 and $35, are the ones that are really thin, soft, and feel kind of like a worn-in feel. If you know anything about the brand Tommy Bahama, you know that they're kind of like a relaxed, vacation-y, uh, island vibe. Um, and that's kind of how the jeans feel. They're very relaxed. Uh, they do feel very worn in. And sometimes they are distressed. But most of the time, I'm just, I'm able to tell them just based on the way they feel. So really thin, really soft, relaxed fit. Style name is usually on the inside of these jeans too, so I would recommend looking up the style name when you do comps. The next brand is True Religion Jeans. Now, I want to caution you with this one because there are faked True Religion Jeans. Um, to me, the faked ones look pretty obvious, but I would just make sure to do a sold comps on True Religion Jeans and just kind of click into a couple, get familiar with the tag. Um, and then you can usually tell a fake just by the feel of the jeans. If they feel quality made, they're probably real. Um, but if the tag looks a little wonky or off of what the sold comps look like, um, you're probably dealing with a fake. I don't think they're very common. I think I've only come across um, a fake once or twice in this brand, but it is something that I wanted you to be aware of. So again, with the contrast stitching, this brand is really... Uh, well known for their obvious contrast stitching. Usually this brand is a really dark wash and then like a almost white stitching. So they're pretty easy to spot. They're also really well known for their flat pockets, which I talked about earlier on in the video. So that is something to look for. And they have a distinctive uh, back embroidery on the back pocket. I'll have pictures up here, um, but it's usually pretty easy to find true religion jeans and the tag is very, very obvious. Again, it almost always has all the style information and the size there. One great thing about this brand of jeans is usually on the back patch of the jeans, meaning on the outside of the jeans on the back, usually the top right, there's a little leather patch and that also says the style name at the bottom. Um, as well as the size. So that's really easy to look up with this brand. Definitely not all styles sell great in this brand, but if you do get a style that is desirable, some of them go for 50 plus. And then the last brand I wanted to leave you with was a brand that is new to me. I just learned it over the last year. And since then I found a couple of these jeans and they're doing really well. So the brand is called Robin's Jeans. This is another one that supposedly is faked. I have not come across them, um, but I am just, you know, getting to know this brand. But as I did research the first time I found them, I did learn that they could be faked. So there are things that you have to look out for. But again, kind of like with True Religion jeans, if they feel quality made, like all the stitching looks right, the tag looks right, um, it's probably not a fake. There's probably I don't think there's a lot of fakes out there, but I, I again did want to mention that just so that you were aware. 
So the Robin's men's jeans are pretty easy to spot. I don't think that they typically have that contrast stitching, but they have uh, flat pockets usually, and they're not hard to miss because they are usually, and I'll put some pictures here, uh, really colorful, really embellished. They don't look like other jeans. They're going to stand out. So depending on which of the styles, colors that you have of this brand of men's jeans, um, they can go anywhere from like 50 to 100. Um, and I know that that's a big range, but it really depends on the color, the embellishment, the style that you have. In general, I would say the more embellished with his, these jeans, the more loud and crazy they are, the better, the more money you're going to make. All right, guys, so that is it for today's video. I really hope you guys learned something today. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you're not currently shopping in the men's section and you would like to start, the men's jeans section is a really great place to start and you'll start making more money. And that's the purpose of this video is for you to make more income and add something easy and simple to your knowledge base that you can pick up quickly while you're in a thrift store and have hardly any stress involved because it's such an easy category to learn. So don't be intimidated by the men's section. And if you are going to start somewhere, I'd highly suggest you start in the men's jeans section. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.